Swifters, this is Prof G, and I must say you did amazing work in the last lesson. Let's put that work to work in the Word Garden app. We're going to update our app so that it starts off with dashes for all letters in the Word to Guess area, and we'll change this as correct letters are guessed, revealing each correct letter that was guessed in the correct position. And along the way, we'll learn about the on appear and the on submit modifiers. Let's tend that Word Garden with Swift. And Swift Squad, do me a solid and tell your homies about the goodness of the channel. Comments, likes, subscribes, help others find the goodness. Now you might remember that the dashes that are currently showing in this text field are just inside of a string literal, and that's really not what we want for our game. And we wrote a to-do in this code to fix this. We wrote that we should change this to word to guess and in brackets current word. Well, not quite. We do want to change this from a string literal to a variable, but in our prior lesson we used the variable name revealed word to hold this value. So let's create a revealed word variable up where we created our properties, but let's also keep track of word to guess, which should be at an index we'll keep track of which is an integer value I wrote current word in here but why don't we use current word index I think that's an even better name since it conveys that this value will hold an index and that's a number so let's head up to where the properties are declared in our struct and we'll change current word to current word index now we only mention this in one place but to be sure I'll right click on current word select refactor rename Xcode folds up the code and shows me I'll replace current word with current word index and oh yeah I mentioned this in a comment now comments aren't automatically replaced with a refactor rename but if you move your cursor over the gray area of the comment you see the little plus sign emerge click that sneaky one current word switches to current word index in the comment press return we're golden and then below this let's declare our word to guess as a state variable with at state private var word to guess and I do want to point out that you can't do this you can initialize this value to words to guess the array in brackets current word index because look words to guess is not even recognized by code completion so you can't use a structs properties to initialize another struct property so what we need to do is first initialize initialize word to guess to some literal value. Empty string is a good choice. And then once the app begins to run and all of these values have been initialized, then we should reset word to guess this string to the words to guess array at the index of current word index. And before we go ahead and do this, I'm noticing that words to guess is currently set up as a state variable, but we're actually not changing this in our code. So we don't need this as a state variable. We can actually declare this as a constant. Now, if you ever change your app so that users can enter their own word lists then you'll want to go back and you'll want to change this to a state variable but for now since our words to guess array is not going to change in our app we can just cut out the words to guess declaration delete the state variable stuff and then instead down here I'll declare private let and I'll pass in what I just cut out words to guess equals the string array swift dog cat now remember, we also want to keep track of the revealed word in a variable called revealed word, and that should start out as underscores for every letter with spaces in between, but we should update that variable to include any correct letters that the user guesses. So for now, let's declare a state variable below word to guess as state private var revealed word, and we'll initially set this equal to the empty string, but we'll update this as our code runs. And I'm going to highlight revealed word here, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to head down to where the string of underscores and spaces was. I'll highlight those underscores and paste the revealed word variable right over them. But we need to properly initialize this revealed word and we need to initialize a word to guess. And we want to do this after our code starts running, which is when all of our properties have been initialized so that we can refer to those variables that have been initialized. So how can we run some code once our app starts running? Well, one thing we can do is we can leverage a modifier called on appear. Now this modifier runs code when a view first appears. So if we put the on appear modifier on our v stack the outermost view in our context view then we can put code in the on appear modifier to format the revealed word and the word to guess so here's how we do this i'm going to first fold the code in the v stack so that i don't see any of the code that's inside this and i can be sure that i'm adding on appear to the v stack modifiers and remember how to fold the code we just simply click in the code folding ribbon just to the left of where the v stack starts now the ignore safe area is the only modifier that I have for my V stack, but below this, I'll say dot on appear right under this. I'll select the option with perform and look at code completions description. It says that this adds an action to perform before the view appears. So the on appear modifier is a great place to put any code that you want to update a user interface before that interface shows 
Very cool. And the parentheses arrow void here means that you put a closure after this modifier. That's code between curlies. And that's going to include any code that executes when the view first appears. So we'll press return to accept this. Press return here to get the trail enclosure curlies. And in between the curlies, let's update our two variables. So we'll say word to guess, which is the string, is equal to words to guess, the string array. See the brackets in here? And in between the brackets, we'll put current word index, which we initially set to zero and we'll update during the course of the use of the app. So once this code runs, we're going to make sure that word to guess is the very first string in our words to guess array. And then in our next line, we want to create the revealed word. And this is initially going to be a bunch of dashes, one dash for each letter in our word to guess with spaces in between the dashes. And oh yeah, we already wrote code to set this up. It was in our string work playground from the prior lesson. Now I've already opened my string work playground. It's behind this project. So I'm going to command accent mark to pull up my string work playground. If you don't have yours open, open it up right now. And the code we want is this chunk right here, this one liner that sets revealed word to the repeating string. Remember that from the prior lesson? And I'll also copy the comment here. You don't need the comment if you don't want it, but I like to make sure that my code is documented. Then I'll flip back to my project window with command accent mark and paste this in. And I don't need this print statement, so I'll delete that. And we see up top five dashes that represent the letters S-W-I-F-T, since Swift is the first word in our words to guess array. And just to make sure things are working, let's head up to the top where we have our words to guess array, this constant declared. And I'm going to change that first word from Swift to ubiquitous. And that's 10 letters. And now we see 10 underscores in here. Nice. And if I change this instead of ubiquitous to at capital A capital T, I get two underscores perfection, but I'll go back to Swift as my first word, and we see five dashes separated by spaces. Super cool. Now let's add some code that will execute when the guess a letter button is pressed. So I'm going to click to unfold the folded code, and this is going to be down here inside the button action for the guess a letter button. Now here we want to modify the revealed word so that it shows any letter that the player has guessed. And we also wrote code to do this in our previous lesson. Here's my playground. Remember this code here? That's the one with map and dot joined. Now I could use this one liner here, but I'm going to choose the one with three lines because I think it's a little bit easier to read. But this code assumes that we're keeping track of the letters that the user has guessed in a variable named letters guessed. Our app doesn't do this yet. So before we paste in this code, I'm going to copy it though. We better create that variable and we should add each guessed letter to the letter guessed as the user guesses that letter. So back in our app, up where we declare the struct's properties, and I could create this variable anywhere, but I think right underneath the revealed word is a good spot. I'll declare the letters guest variable like this at state private var letters guest equals, and initially this is empty string. Then back in the button action for guest a letter, I can delete the to do comment. And after I set the text field as focused equal to false, although the order doesn't really matter here, I can update my letters guest with letters guest equals letters guest plus guest letter. Remember, guest letter is the letter that the player typed into the text field. And then right below this, I can paste in the code that I just copied. And so now let's try this out in the preview canvas. So I'll type in an S and that reveals S in the revealed word. Q adds nothing. V adds nothing. T adds a T on the end where it should be. But also notice we're not clearing out our guest letter. That's the variable that's inside of the text field. And we should be doing that after each guess. See, as I type in W, I, F, those letters stay in the text field. But there's an easy fix for this. At the end of the button action for the guest a letter button, we'll just enter in guest letter equals empty string. And this is going to work great. But before we test this out, remember our keyboard also has a done key. And when we press the done key on the keyboard, we should also be performing the same code that we execute when the guess a letter button is pressed. Now, how do we execute code when we press the done key? Well, there's a special modifier to use in the text field and it's called on submit. And this works for whatever key is named, whatever the original return key was named. So if you changed it using the submit label modifier, like we did changing it to done, it'll work on any of those keys, whether it's return or a renamed return key. So at the end of the text field modifiers, let's add dot on submit and look in code completions description. It says it adds an action to perform when the user submits a value to this view while pressing return or done in our case, submits the value so that will trigger this modifier and notice the curlies in the code. Even though it's a different notation than the prends, the arrow and the void that we saw in the on appear modifier, this also means we have curlies that accept the closure for this modifier. So that's a block of code that will execute when this modifier fires, 
press return to accept this, we get our curlies, and there's one bit of additional code that we want to add in here whenever we press the done key, which used to be the return key, and this code isn't going to be in our button. Now remember from our prior lesson that we said that we couldn't easily disable the done button when there's nothing in the text field. So that means it's going to be possible to press the done button when there's nothing in the text field. So if the user presses done with nothing in the text field, we don't want to process that as a guest letter, we just want to ignore it. And the way that we can deal with this is pretty easy. We'll just add a guard statement like this guard guest letter not equal to, that's exclamation point equals, empty string, else, and in Curly's return. So as long as the guest letter doesn't equal an empty string, the guard will let us through. But if it is an empty string, then we're going to return and we're not going to execute any of the code that we execute when we guess a letter. Now, as for the rest of the code that we want in here, we could re-enter the exact same code that we have in our button action for the guess a letter button. But remember what we learned in our lesson on refactoring, DRY, or don't repeat yourself. So this is a great opportunity for us to refactor. So we'll create a function with all of the code that we should execute when the user enters a letter, whether they press the done key on the keyboard or the guess a letter button on the screen. So we'll head down to the button action for guess a letter, and we're going to highlight all the code in this closure, and we're going to cut it out with a command X, and then just before the closing curly in the struct, so that's the curly that's flush left, just above it, I'm going to create this new function by saying func, and we're going to call this guess a letter, lower camel case, that's what we do for functions too, and we'll open and close parens because we're not passing any parameters, and we'll open and close curlies, and in between those curlies we'll paste in the code that we just cut. Then we can head back up to the button action for guess a letter button. And in these now empty curlies, we'll just call guess a letter. Look at this code completion knows about this function. Press return. It enters the open and close parens. Nice. And then up here in the closure for the on submit modifier in the text field, I'm also going to call guess a letter right after the guard statement. And now just to see how things work with the keyboard, I'm going to press the play button to build and run in the simulator. Hammer time, everything's looking good. And when I click in the text field, notice the guess a letter button starts out disabled. It's gray and can't be clicked. But if I click on the S, the guess a letter button is now enabled. And if I tap that guess a letter button, S shows up in my revealed word text. Nice, but the guest letter value in the text field is also cleared out. And my guess a letter button is also disabled. That's what I want. Now I can click on the text field again. I can type a W. This time I'll press the done key on the keyboard and look at that. We update the revealed word with the W and the keyboard dismisses and the guest letter is cleared out and the guess a letter button is also disabled. The interface is working just as we want and we can try this with some other letters too. This looks great. Why don't we stop the lesson for now because we've incorporated the things that we did in the previous lesson in the playground and we learned about on appear and on submit. And then in the next lesson, we're going to work on some game mechanics where we update the values up top when the user guesses a word or misses a word. We'll also reset some of the values after a word has been either guessed or missed. And we'll update the images at least initially to show a petal being removed for each letter that is incorrectly guessed. Although we'll hold off including the animation and the sound for a later video. So Swifter, I hope you enjoyed what you learned in this lesson. Why don't you let me know down in the comments? Post a blue sky at me with Built with Prof G if you want a chance to get one of those cool laptop stickers. And always keep hacking.